Hello guys, um, I'm back again. Um, this week we're going to, or right this video, excuse me, um, it is a different week though. We're going to learn um, all about oxygen and how to connect a patient up to uh, various types of oxygen. Um, this is what we call a nasal cannula and um, it, this is what goes into the nose. Now I want you to realize that you see how these spikes, they look like snake fangs, right? They look like this. What we want is we want those fangs or those um, nasal, um, I don't know what you want to call them, fangs, but, but for lack of a better word, prongs, there we go. We want them facing down towards the lung, okay? We don't want them up like this because what's happening is the oxygen is going up to their brain. Yes, the brain needs oxygen, but the brain needs oxygen after the lungs have processed it. So we want to make sure that the prongs are going down into the lungs. So make sure they go on your patient like this, okay? Um, and, then it, and then you have a tubing. First of all, I'm going to show you how to connect this up to an, I mean, to an oxygen tank, and then I'll show you how to connect it up to the wall, okay? So we're going to take this end right here, and we're going to connect it into our oxygen tank um, connection here at the tank. And then you would turn this to the desired flow rate that your patient is to be on. Now, I want you to put the flow rate on before you connect the patient to the oxygen because you don't want to be blowing out their nostrils uh, when you are trying to adjust the flow rate. Okay, so then you would put this on and you would put this on the patient. It's flowing at four liters right at this moment. And then we're going to put it on the patient. It simply, you put it into the nostrils, remember, prongs down, into the nostrils of the patient, around the ears of the patient, okay? And then there's an adjustment here that you just slide up and down to make it a snug fit. Now, if this wasn't a mannequin, it would stay on the ears better. Okay, so that's how you initiate oxygen using a um, oxygen tank. Now, I want to show you how to connect it to the wall. Okay, so again, we're going to have the nasal cannula like we did with the tank. And we're going to connect it to the wall. This is the wall flow meter. Okay, and it's the same. You take this end. You connect it, you have to push really hard, okay? And again, I want you to fluctuate the flow rate before you put it into the patient, okay? And um, with a nasal cannula, you don't want to go above six liters. If you go above six liters, we really should be utilizing um, a mask, and I'll show you that, okay? So again, you put the prongs down around the ears, okay? And you adjust to keep it on the patient by using the little adjustment on the, on the end. Um, now, with a nasal cannula, you want to watch for uh, soreness, redness, uh, sore, uh, sores developing um, in the nasal area here, as well as along the cheekbone, and definitely on the top of the ears. So right here, um, they can develop uh, decubituses. Um, so you really have to be careful when you have um, somebody on nasal cannula. Okay? So that's the nasal cannula. If your patient is not require, is requiring more and more oxygen um, and the uh, nasal cannula isn't working, we have what we call um, a non-rebreather mask. There are venti masks and all other kinds of masks. I'm not going to get into all of the other masks right now because um, that's really respiratory does that. We really are concerned about using uh, a non-rebreather and a nasal cannula. The venti masks are more for specialized areas. So with the 100% with the non-rebreather, this is what this is called, the patient is going to have it on their face and they're going to breathe in the oxygen that's in this bag. In order to do that, you need to have the flow rate up to at least 10 
prefer 12, uh, 15 liters a minute. So you, again, you just stick that on the oxygen flow meter on the wall, okay? You turn this way up, okay? And as you see, the bag filled up with oxygen. And what happens is, when the patient breathes in here, they're gonna deflate this bag with each intake of breath. So every inhalation, they deflate. And then when they exhale, then the bag fills back up again. This allows the patient to breathe in 100% oxygen versus uh, breathing in room air plus the oxygen, which is what they get with the nasal cannula. So the nasal cannula, yes, they're getting oxygen, but they're also getting a lot of, of room air on there as well. So with the 100% um, non-rebreather, you make sure that the bag is filled. Sometimes you have to put your hand over here to make sure that the bag fills up correctly, okay? This has an elastic band. You stick it over the mouth and nose of the patient and over the head like this. Then you take and you pinch this metal piece so it's tight against the nose. We want to have as much of a tight um, seal as we can without causing any kind of uh, sores to develop, okay? And then this these straps you can actually pull to make that tighter so it's got a tighter fit against uh, the face of the patient. And if this was a real person this bag would be going deflating down and then filling back up as they are um, exhaling or taking a breath from a break from breathing. Again uh, with like the nasal cannula we have to be concerned with uh, sorenesses developing um, when they're wearing a mask. So you're going to be watching for anywhere that this may contact with the skin as well as uh, above the ear because of the elastic. Okay? And uh, that's that. I'm going to show you now some different types of respiratory equipment that you may see while you're in the facilities. And we have um, ones that we can connect to uh, a, a mask like this, okay, and that's simply a chamber that looks like this with an O2 tubing connected. And then they open this top up, they instill the medication, albuterol, and nebulizers, okay. Twist that back on, and then they can put it on a mask. So it looks like this. And this is used for patients that aren't able to hold on to the, um, to what we call, we call it a lot, peace pipe, but it's a nebulizer treatment that's going to look like this, and I'll show you how to put that on. And that could be used for people that are actually able to hold it. So this would be used, um, if this was a nebulizer treatment, steam, you would see steam coming up and around, um, and that's, it's the vaporizing the liquid that's in there. Um, and then, so it takes anywhere between two to four minutes, five minutes for a respiratory treatment to um, instill. It depends on how many or how much fluid is actually in the chamber itself. So they would continue to breathe this. We want them to breathe it in as much as possible. So when they're receiving this, we really don't want them talking. Um, we really want them to concentrate on taking those deep breaths. Is it going to make a patient cough? You betcha. We want them to cough. It's really, really good that they cough, okay? So um, let's say that our patient is able to, um, to, hold, it on, to hold the treatment for themselves. Um, they would use what we call, we call it a peace pipe, as you can see why. It looks just like a, a peace pipe, okay? And what they do is they actually put this part in their mouth and they clamp down like, uh, you know, they were sucking in a straw and they breathe in the, the vapors that are coming at, coming from the chamber. You may see steam coming this way as well. Um, they don't get 100% of the medication, but they get most of it. And again, um, they just do this until you don't get any more um, steam or mist coming from there. Every once in a while, you may have to give it a tap like this to get the medication that's collected on the sides down into the chamber so that it mists as well. And that's it. That's the different kinds of O2s, and um, I hope you found this beneficial.